Hi, my name is Dr Catherine Hughes from Crime Psych. I'm a criminal psychologist and I run a business that enables me to bring knowledge and learning to everyone, not just those who are at schools, colleges or universities. And I do this by producing a range of blogs, vlogs and free online courses. I do also run some slightly more in-depth courses, both online and face-to-face. -face. You don't need any previous qualifications to learn with me and there are a range of subjects available. So once you've finished watching this video, head on over to my website to see if you can make it to an event or learn online in your own time. This particular video is looking at male victims of domestic abuse and violence. Domestic abuse is widely known and talked about these days. There are numerous support options for many women. However, it's less widely discussed when the victim is male. Relatively recently, studies have discussed male victims of domestic violence and they've had opposing views. Critics of studies into this phenomenon have stated that violence by women is only in self-defence or retaliation and therefore our real concern should be violence against women. These kinds of views are outdated, sexist and untrue. We, as a society, often hold stereotypes of certain kinds of behaviours or certain problems. We've become a society that's divided in one way or another, such as class, race, gender, age and so on. In the last 10 years alone, England has seen the rise of campaigns such as Ask Twice, encouraging men to talk about their mental health, and Me Too, encouraging women to speak out against sexual violence and sexual harassment. This is because of the recognition that men and women have been conditioned to accept or believe that certain things are true of them because of their gender. There are now many support resources for women who've experienced domestic abuse. However, these resources aren't as common for men. In terms of refuges and safe house, there are currently only 37 organisations with 204 spaces. But only 40 of those are places dedicated to helping men. Many parts of the UK have no or little places at all. For instance, London has no refuge spaces. As a woman, I have experienced difficulties and challenges along the way because of my gender. However, as a mother of two sons, I know that they have experienced challenges because of their gender too. I'm careful about where I go and when because of the risk of attack. However, I've talked with my sons about the dangers of facing false accusations if they put themselves in certain circumstances. I know that I could pick up a child that I didn't know if they fell down on the floor without anybody raising an eyebrow, but a young man wouldn't be able to. We should never be complacent against gender stereotypes when it comes to behaviour of any kind. We can and should be removing any gender biases. Men can be raped. Women can be abusers. Men can have mental health problems. Women can be violent. Dr Sarah Wallace from the University of South Wales said that there are numerous reasons why domestic violence and abuse wasn't reported by both men and women, including a fear of retaliation or a lack of trust or confidence in the police. She went on to say, however, the issue of underreporting is even more pronounced amongst men. They fear appearing unmanly, experience shame, embarrassment and a failure to live up to masculine ideals. The Women's Aid website states there are important differences between male violence against women and female violence against men, namely the amount, severity and impact. Women experience higher rates of repeated victimisation and are much more likely to be seriously hurt or killed by the male victim. Further to that, women are more likely to experience higher levels of fear and are more likely to be subjected to coercive and controlling behaviours. 576,000 men, which is about 2.5% of men, and 1.2 million, around 4.8% of women, were victims of partner abuse in 2018-2019. And that equates to a ratio of two female victims to every one male. However, 
just because the numbers are not as big for male victims as they are for females, men experience a range of additional challenges surrounding domestic abuse. This figure is not likely to reflect the true figures of domestic abuse against men, though. This will be due to the underreporting by men. In 2017-2018, nearly half of male victims failed to tell anyone that they were a victim of domestic abuse. They're nearly three times less likely to tell anyone than a female victim. 49% of men fail to tell anyone as opposed to 19% of women. This has worsened since 2015, where the figures were 61% for men and 88% for women. Most men don't believe or feel that they are a victim until some time after they no longer have the control of their life and became isolated. One survivor said that they felt that they were being groomed in some way. There's usually a sense of shame, loss of pride, feelings of lack of a masculinity. In a BBC article, one man talked about his experience of domestic abuse and he stated, she was always jealous of other women being attracted to me. She would be nasty to me for days. It went to the stage where she was nasty to me all the time. There was no let up at all. I couldn't do anything other than try and hold her off. It was very difficult. You're judged by people like the police if you were the one who was, as though you were the one who was causing everything, he said. They don't understand that men are getting abused. And I, but I think that they're starting to, that man said. Another victim called Dave, obviously not his real name, said he was made to feel useless because he was unemployed and his children were used as a tool with threats to leave him. He said one time she punched me and I pushed her off me. She ran to the telephone and called the police. Apparently her friend had told her that if you want to get rid of your husband, start a fight, call the police and they'll throw him out of the house. And so that's what she did. There is a website called Mankind that supports men who've been victims of domestic abuse. I'll read you one of the testimonials from their website now. I was with my wife for six years. I used to do everything I could for her. I paid off her debts, paid her bills and paid for her car. But I soon learned that nothing would ever be enough for her. The emotional abuse started first. I was very rarely allowed to go anywhere by myself. When I was, it would only be to work. And even then, she'd phone me constantly throughout the day. I tried to leave her when this started, but she emotionally blackmailed me into staying by overdosing on tablets, which I later found out that she'd spat out underneath the bed. She'd also threatened to hurt any future girlfriends that I have so badly that I wouldn't want to be with them. Optimistically thinking, he said, that things could get better between us, I proposed to her after two years of being together. That was the biggest mistake of my life, he says. Things went dramatically downhill after that. The first time she viciously attacked me was on Good Friday 2008. I don't know why or what provoked her. She ran into the house, grabbed a knife, and as soon as I walked in, she was attacking me with it. Then she grabbed my testicles and twisted them as hard as she could and wouldn't let go. It was excruciatingly painful. To this day, I don't know what caused her to be so violent. She just snap from nice to nasty in an instant. The violence only got worse from there. The second time she attacked me, she followed me around the house, punching me in the head, hitting me with a pint glass, knocked me to the floor and proceeded to drop her knee into my head repeatedly. It was ferocious and I was genuinely fearing for my life. I also remember on another occasion she was punching me in the eye when I was driving around a roundabout so hard that she bruised her knuckles. However, she said later on that I was in the wrong for causing the bruising to her knuckles. The most shocking attack, however, happened on our wedding night. She really beat me, kicking and punching me repeatedly. I remember her digging her nails, her nails into my cheek. I felt like it was going to rip my cheek off. I managed to get away and ran down the road in bare feet and in my wedding suit. I went back because she was threatening to hang herself with my wedding tie. 
I later got beaten because the cuts on my face ruined our honeymoon pictures. She was eventually convicted of assault and was given a six month restraining order. She subsequently lost her job as a care assistant and I've been left with a lot of fear and I'm constantly on a high state of alert. I am, however, in the process of explaining my experience to my therapist and working on what happened to me and slowly moving on. It's a long and difficult process, but I know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and I'll not allow her to ruin my future. So as you've heard, men do experience some horrific abuse from women. Domestic abuse can be psychological, physical, financial, emotional or sexual. It has only recently become a law that controlling and coercive behaviour can now be classified as domestic abuse. Controlling behaviour is a range of acts designed to make a person subordinate and or dependent by isolating them from sources of support, exploiting their resources and capacity for personal gain, depriving them of the means for needed independence. And it's also regulating their everyday behaviour. Coercive behaviour is an act or pattern of acts of assault, threats, humiliation and intimidation or other abuse that's used to harm, punish or frighten the victim. If a woman restricts a man's movements or monitors him constantly, it's abusive. Limiting outside involvement such as family, friends, work, colleagues, constant yelling and shouting, verbal humiliation either in private or in company constantly being laughed at and made fun of, blaming you for their own failures. Threats and intimidation of any kind are abusive and completely unacceptable. Studies into intimate partner violence have found similar patterns of abuse in males and in females. The patterns of abuse are similar in that both male and female aggressors experience similar, similar controlling and physically abusive behaviours from their spouses. However, there are important challenges that men do face. When men contact support lines, they're sometimes not believed initially. Many have spoken out against their experiences with a system that's designed to help female victims of domestic abuse only. Male victims can be subjected to life-threatening violence. They often fear their wives' aggression, their wives sometimes stalk them and their wives or partners attempt to control them. Violence, and in particular domestic abuse and violence, is not a gender-specific problem. It's a human one. Violence by women should be taken seriously, so with the goal of ending all violence being achieved. I hope that you found this video interesting, engaging and informative. If you are affected by any of the issues discussed in this video, I have put some websites in the video description that can offer you support and advice. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.